What up, peoples? Let's talk Rockstar. And it's supposed issues with making employees crunch. Are these alleged mispractices true? What is the solution to end this turmoil? Let's discuss this all right now. Welcome to the medicine. Hey, look, peoples, thank you for joining me again. It's your boy, MM2K, back again with another one. Before we continue, if you can do me a huge favor, you know what I'm saying, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, then rock those bells for me, please, so you're notified. It means a lot, and it helps your boy make it possible to provide you with more doses, you know what I'm saying? I appreciate all of y'all, straight up. Now, look, here's the real deal, holy field, people. In lieu of the release of Red Dead Redemption 2, developer of the game, Rockstar has been accused of forcing or strong arming employees into working some crazy hours to complete games. This has started a very tumultuous debate within the community. Now I've seen a lot of hoopla about this subject, and let me be honest with you, it has me very sad as a gamer, because this hoopla has displayed how many of us so-called YouTubers and content creators don't do our due diligence, or just plain want to caveat facts to suit their agenda. Therefore, Dr. MM2K is going to help prescribe that dose to get to the bottom of this. In order to do that, first I want to shed light correctly on the allegations here. Secondly, I want to help everyone understand the real takeaway from these allegations that gamers should be focused on. And lastly, what's the solution that all sides can agree upon in light of this? First off, the allegations are not about a few crunch hours a couple of months before release. Nor did the developers in question who spoke up against this crunch were aware of all that was entailed as far as how much they would have to work and how consistently they would have to do it. This is according to their accounts. Now to highlight the actual complaints about the atmosphere and this supposed crunch, a uh, serious crunch that, that's there at Rockstar, let me just highlight the following. First off, a few years ago, there was a letter sent to Rockstar San Diego from spouses of developers there. They claimed that sudden but indefinite crunches were causing disruption to their families, and they were a big hindrance to the health of the devs. Secondly, now again, that letter came years ago, several years ago, and it came during the time that I wanna say GTA 4 was winding down and GTA 5 was starting. Various accounts though, by alleged former devs on Twitter suggest that the letter had no effect because Additional accounts show that even during GTA 5's development, that development was in quote unquote development hell. That per one person's account, they worked 16 plus hours a day, six days a week for over a year. Third, it did not stop there. As a poster on Reddit who pretty much validated that they worked on Red Dead 2 by posting info not yet released but later validated by Rockstar themselves as they released information about the game, that person confirmed that during its development cycle of Red Dead 2, the cycle continued. Lastly, the Rockstar devs that came forth to speak good on behalf of the company, mind you, were not doing so because a social media embargo was lifted on any employee who had anything to say about Rockstar. That embargo was only lifted on those who wanted to say positive things, as re reported by acclaimed reporter Jason Schreier of Kotaku. I also want to add lastly, and this just in, okay, that in lieu of all this, even though people are saying, oh no, this crunch was just a couple of months, or this is a lie, people are fabricating this, if this was such a lie, then help me understand why Rockstar just recently lifted a policy that quote unquote made people feel like that they were forced into doing overtime. So if everybody there was just happy about doing this overtime because they were working on that quality product, why did Rockstar feel that they had to do this? And why in lieu of that have many employees said, hey, this is excellent. We've been waiting for them to do this. This is just it people. So I wanted to spend that time just to make sure that we understand and we understood the full context of this. This wasn't just a few hours, a couple of months before crunch. 
people were working 100 plus hours. They said this has been done consistently. This has been a reported trend since the GTA 4 era, and it's a big deal. And it had to be a big deal for Rockstar, a company known to stand its ground and to be hardcore about what they do, and you either love it or leave it, for them to make such a big change suddenly. Now that we got that cleared up, I want to talk about what the real big takeaway is in regards to all this. Now, personally, as a developer of SQL database products um, internally for um, a Fortune 500 company for a lot of our internal clients, I can tell you this. Unexpected year-long, 100 plus hour a week crunches are not good for the mind, period. I don't care what other industry you work in, or what other labor job you have done, it doesn't matter. And trust me, I've done those too. But coding is a completely different animal. There is not a default code, for instance, a coder is given to solve a, a, an issue or, or to come to a solution. There are a thousand ways to skin a cat when it comes to coding. With each project given, each coder is selecting their best known method or their best known coding method to solve that problem or to get to that solution and they're trying to work at it consistently and it's rocking their mind. And in the fact that you have a factor that is a wild variable and that wild variable is, is this fun? With having to plan for that wild variable and being that that wild variable can actually just throw out everything that you've produced, something that I don't even have to account for in doing my SQL coding. All I gotta do is make sure that said form when entered into does this and delivers said product to this location. I ain't gotta worry about if this is fun. That's a wild variable. But the simple fact that a coder of a video game has to do that. They can do everything right, do the best techniques, whatever, have the best looking game. But if it's not considered fun, it can all be scrapped. And that, my friends, takes just my understanding of coding and my sympathy towards the situation. It just makes it a, the, the tip of the iceberg here in regards to the insanity of all this. But look, 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 look. Even if you don't want to sympathize with the developers, fine, that's fine. If you don't want to uh, do backpacks for humanity for these developers and, and deliver them canned goods so they can feel better about themselves, just remember this. Due to these long, extensive crunches, top-notch developers are leaving the industry because of this. And here's why, let me break this down for you. I aspire to be a video game developer. I go to school, pay a ridiculous amount of money to do so. I therefore, once I'm done, have a ridiculous loan to pay back. I get hired by a big time studio for great pay. However, I have to relocate to one of the areas, most likely San Diego or the California area, somewhere where the cost of living is high, right? Redman, something like that, right? And because, in all likelihood, like other developers, I have to buy my own insurance on like the Obamacare market or something and pay my own taxes because in all likelihood, I'm a contracted uh, um, developer. That's right, my friends. A lot of people that work in this industry, they're not full-fledged employees with an HSA and they get a W-2 at the end of the year. They're hired contractors, okay? They're independent contractors and they have to pay their own taxes. They got to take care of their own insurance. That's a completely different animal there. In addition to that, let's throw in some regular everyday life stuff. I have uh, a family, wife and the kids. My wife had to quit her job so she can relocate with me. Now, to be fair to uh, most of these development companies, I I've been made aware of the crunch time before the release of a game. They told me that in, in, in my interview, you know what I mean, or in my internship. They said, hey, look, you know, here with ABC Developer Company, you know what I mean, you're, you're going to be making the top-notch AAA games. Um, yeah, we, we, we do a lot of cleanup to give the best quality product to our consumers. But at the end of, the, of it all, you know, after that few months of cleaning up the product, right, um, you'll be at E3, your, your product will be showcased to all of the, the biggest gaming names and you'll, you'll be a star, right? Well, guess what? In lieu of that, what I've just been told, I coat my ass off. I get all the models working and moving as expected and I put in pretty long days to do so, especially at the end, right? Or what I thought it was the end because the creative director reveals that the publisher hates what we have done so far. It's not fun, remember that? My team now is gonna have to start from scratch and we are working 100 
plus hour weeks to finish this. An additional three months of doing so, as we were originally told, has then turned into six months. Then a year with no end in sight. I'm mentally drained. I can't focus. My coding is slipping. I asked just for one weekend off to refresh and follow up on important family emergencies as well to help ease my mind. I'm told, sure, if you want to have that contract canceled or just be labeled as a lazy ass, go right ahead. I want to just quit, but again, I have family, high ass cost of living, and that crazy student loan that will just not go away. I have to see this through. I can't just quit. A friend comes to me and says, you know what? I feel you. I was in the same situation. Same situation. But guess what, buddy? You can use some of those certifications that we got in school and do what I just had to do. I had to bite the bullet, man. And I'm just doing basic coding slash IT for a Fortune 500 company. Hey, it's not my passion, but at least I can get my sanity back. And that, my friends, is what's happening to top-notch development and talent in the industry left and right. And that is the biggest red flag to take away from all this. Unfortunately, due to our ignorance to this matter, this becomes a gamer versus the devs de debacle and the problem does not get resolved at all. So what is the solution, MM2K? Well, I tell you what. One thing I will say, it's not boycotting the game. That's just plain ridiculous. In doing that, you're taking away any cross benefit of those poor devs that I just broke down to you in that scenario. And, and, and those people are struggling to get something out of this. So you can't boycott the game. That makes no sense. But what we need to do as gamers is recognize that this is a problem. Let's not just brush it under the rug because we think it's going to risk making AAA games. Because believe you me, I, I can also agree that the need for AAA games are a must. <laughs> they have to come. But the method of getting them can change. Let's advocate that studios that have to do this, that are in this industry having to do this right now, to meet our demand, let's advocate that they push for better tech. Right now, as the tech improves for the end user, which is us, it becomes more grueling for the inputter, which is the person that I gave you in that scenario. That's just plainly unacceptable. We also have to be honest and realize that as long as we continue to choke off revenue streams, that the likelihood these dads will not hire more people to help relieve the stress and maintain talent is going to occur. Meaning, these over-the-top fights regarding loot boxes and microtransactions have to stop, okay? Now I get it, I I'm triggering many that want to cape for these uh, uh, fake rage moments, you know what I'm saying? But all that fake rage and all that hoopla that you've caused is now coming to fruition. It's hit you here in the games like I've always told you. MM2K told you games are costing more to develop. You wanted to come with these tinfoil hat conspiracy theories on how they weren't. Then Amy Henning had to come out here and shut y'all the hell up. MM2K told y'all that if y'all keep fighting these battles and go over the top, go way too far left in regards to loot boxes and microtransactions, you're cutting off revenue streams and it's going to hurt you in the long run. You didn't want to believe me, but now this is a pure example of that happening. How you ask? Well, price of games are currently at $60 USD within the states, right? But those, that $60 does not reflect proper inflation, nor do they supplement the rising cost of development that I just talked about. This too causes the devs to suffer because dev owners will not hire help that is needed to help with this crunch if it inflates their bottom line and there is no financial offset, period. Lastly, understand, this is not a Rockstar problem alone. We have to keep it. We can't just blame Rockstar. It might have just come to, to surface with them. They might be of the biggest offenders, but this is not a Rockstar problem alone. It's the entire industry. We as consumers make ourselves look very dumb, period. There's no other way to describe it, dumb. When we talk all day about games, but don't understand the process behind how they are made, nor the financial market that creates this type of atmosphere. However, in lieu of our own stupidity, there still is hope. I urge everyone to tackle their stupidity by reading Blood, Sweat, and Pixels by the aforementioned Jason Schreier to better understand the game creation process. And damn it, it's time for y'all to understand the market which is driving all this. Please go pick up a copy of Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert T. Kawasaki. Please. Hey, y'all, I can guarantee
that if everyone just read these two books, just these two books alone, 70% of the stupid shit that we say in these gaming streets will just evaporate. <laughs> and with that said, that's it from your boy, MM2K. You know what I'm saying? Hey, let me know what you think in the comment section below. You want more? You know where to catch me. I'm on the corner of every boulevard. You know what I'm saying? Check out my links below to follow me. Yo, I got a show with your boys, Dirk Griggity, TRS. I do it weekly. Well, we do it weekly. It's called Scram Parks. It comes on every Wednesday, 9.30 p.m. Eastern on my YouTube channel, this one here. Check out the pntsnetwork.com for more details on that. And last but not least, support my brethren, the broadband bullies. Check out that Patreon link. Check, on, check out that Discord link. Check out that Garrett's Fly. And as always, hey, yo, if you're going to be for the devs, let's be for the devs, y'all. Let's raise our gamer IQ and know how this stuff works so we know how to get the best product out of this community. And as always, you have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day.